with part four of the continued 6.5 Grendel reloading series. And I'm gonna bring up the chat boards and make sure everything's running smoothly. I'm gonna wait a little bit of time here for everyone to log in. So we'll give this a few minutes. And I figured there'd be no better way to spend the lockdown in Wisconsin <laughs> in regards to resizing brass. So looks like we already got five people watching. And if you guys are out there watching live, um, why don't you make yourself known in the chat box, say hello, and let everyone know you're out there watching. And we are continuing uh the 6.5 grendel reloading series live and if you guys are new to the game if you're new to reloading this is going to be an extra special treat for you and just to do a quick recap and part one here and let me get you guys a little bit closer here and let's see here all right so in part one uh we decap to the brass and we use the FW Arms decapper. And we put that brass in its first stage of wash. In part two, we took the brass out of the wash and we put it in the Lyman Cyclone case dryer to get the brass dry. And we did the first initial uh, cleaning in order to get this brass clean enough for the resizing process. And yesterday we did part three, annealing the brass using the annealees. And if you guys missed any of those parts, you can definitely go back in my video list here and you can watch those over before you watch part four here. And once this live event's done, you can check this out if you're joining halfway through the series. And I got my brass in my popcorn bowl all 50 pieces now it's freshly annealed <laughs> so uh, let me know how the sound looks let me know how the uh, video looks my friends just to make sure everything is looking good on your guys's end um, so let me check the chat box here and we got good old Jeff Allen hey I made it for a live watch and hey Todd and hello Jeff Nice for you to log in. We got Bill Geyser in the house, and he's watching. Vanessa Kitty's in the house. Alaska One Andy's watching. Uh, Jeff Allen saying the sound and video was good. So that, that is awesome. So I'm going to wait a little time here. We got nine watching. And I hope you guys are uh, staying safe with what's going on with the coronavirus. Uh, let me know if you guys are in lockdown in your particular state, and let me know how you guys are doing. Hopefully, you guys are, hopefully you guys are staying safe. Uh, we got good old Paul. Uh, he's rolling in. He's saying, got in early to get a good seat. And heck yeah, you did. Thank you, my friend. Ryan Hutchinson is just rolling in. It says, nice series. And if you guys are just joining, uh, we are up to part four. We're resizing this brass. We just got done annealing it. So I'm going to wait a little while here, let some more people log in. Looks like we're already up to 12 people, so that's good. Uh, so if you're out there watching, make yourself known. And if you are new to the game and you're just starting to reload, man, you are in for a treat. And if this is the first video I've ever watched, you could definitely go back to my channel and the video list and start over from scratch from part one, part two, and part three. So we got a lot more parts to go. And I want you guys to join me on this adventure in regards to reloading for the PSA 6.5 Grendel series. And that series, if you haven't seen it and you're new to this uh, series, um, check out that video playlist area. It's the Palmetto State Armory 6.5 Grendel PSA review series. And you can check that out from the start too. And there's an insane amount of information, not only on the PSA 6.5 Grendel PSA review series, but part 
uh, two and part three is strictly reloading in great detail. Pretty much exactly what we're doing right now, other than being live. So yeah, check that out. And before we get going here, um, if you enjoy this content and you enjoy these videos, these live broadcasts, do my do me a favor, and I'll keep on doing you guys a favor uh, with this video content by subscribing to Elster's Minute Americans. It's my B-side channel. And that channel, Elster's Minute Americans, is eventually going to become exactly this. Nothing but live broadcasts, podcasts. I'm going to have some very well-known and very knowledgeable people on there uh, so we can all learn together. So once I get done with this video series, check out the description box below. Once I can get the thumbnail done and get the description in there, there will be a link after this live event that you can just click on. It'll take you directly to Elster's Minute Americans. Otherwise, you can simply just search for on YouTube, Elster's Minute Americans. So, um, so Alaska One Andy, work at Sportsman's Warehouse in Fairbanks. President Trump says we are essential. <laughs> I guess it's better than not being essential, right? Um, Vanessa Kitties, locked down to domestic travel. Alaska One Andes out in the house there. Vanessa Kitties, nice Alaska up there. Yep. Uh, Jeff Allen saying Michigan's governor shut down the gun stores here. A lot of pissed off people, rightly so they should. It's all right. Um, and the Second Amendment is just as crucial, in my opinion, to going out to the grocery store and getting food. Your right to defend yourself is a natural right. It is born within you. It's not something that someone gave to you and they can't take that away. And because of that, it is essential. So um, so we are up to the reloading process here and I am using a Hornady die, a full length resizing die because this is for an AR firearm. This isn't bolt action where you get the luxury of doing neck size only. You know, for bolt action, you can do neck only or full length for size, but for an AR, you need to full length for size. You just can't do neck only. You need to put the body of that brass back in the spec. You need to bump that head space full length for size and also get that neck back in the, ten, uh, in the spec so you got really good neck tension. Now, I am asked this, con this question constantly, do you crimp? And I don't, and I've shot thousands and thousands of rounds. I know this is a uh, heated topic in regards to do you crimp your rounds, especially for semi-automatic, and I don't. Uh, as long as I have good neck tension, I just don't crimp. And the reason why I don't crimp, as long as I got good neck tension, I just don't feel it's necessary. Also, crimping is heavily dependent on the length of your brass. So you gotta, if you do crimp, you better make sure the length of those pieces of brass are spot on. They're not all over the place. If they are all over the place, your crimp is also going to be all over the place. If you have different lengths of brass, it's going to engage that crimp in your die in different way, different forms, different ways. And it's one will have more crimp than the other one. If you got your brass lengths are all over the place, you might not have any crimp on one piece and you might have a massive crimp on the other. So if you are crimping, make sure the length of your brass is all at the same length. Um, and I'm about to show you how to lube this brass. And personally, I use a Hornady one-shot case lube. And if you are not using this, this is called Imperial Case Wax. In my opinion, you're not doing it right. You got, in my opinion, you really need to use Imperial Case Wax. There is no substitute. Um, so I'm about to show you that. And if you do not lube your brass when you size, you're quickly gonna learn how to use one of these. And that's a stuck case removal tool. And trust me, and I haven't used this in a while, and hopefully I don't jinx myself, uh, but there, there are parts in here to remove a stuck piece of brass out of your die. If you don't lube that brass, that will happen. So it's super crucial that you get that done. Um, and if you want a further detail of how to reload from start to finish, check out that playlist area. I have a start to finish 10 part series 
start to finish of how to reload for a semi-automatic. And in that series, I'm reloading for 5.56 and 3.08 all at the same time. And in the very last part of that series, the 10th part, I shoot those reloads. And we did a 6x5 target on both firearms. And that is six shots, five shots each, 30 roll total rounds shot in a row. And both targets average all 30 rounds each target, sub them away. And I believe that 5.56 five, was down in the 0.7s or 0.8s, I believe, for 30 total rounds consecutively. So that's, in my opinion, pretty damn uh, impressive. So. So if you guys are out there, if you got any questions, let them rip so I can answer them, especially if you're new. And let's get going with resizing. So like I said, we need to lube this brass. I'm gonna show you at least how I do it. Everyone's got a different method, their madness, and this is just how I do it. And let me get this pointed down here. Now this is just how I lube my brass. Doesn't mean you, this is how you need to do it. Uh, but at least for me, this works out really good. Now I use a combination of one shot case lube and also imperial case wax. You can see my brass and my popcorn bowl here and they're all con uh, consistently annealed, so that's nice. And what I like to do is I get a little bit of case wax and you don't use a lot, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long ways and you just need to get maybe something like this not too much. Let's see if I can get this in focus here. This is pretty hard to do while it's live. Uh, so you just get a little bit like that and you smear that in the palm of your hand. And then what I like to do is I personally like to shake this up a little bit. The one shot case lube, make sure you shake this really good before you use it. And I'm gonna refresh my screen and make sure that this is still live. Make sure you guys are still out there. Yeah. So we are still good. So we'll shake this up a little bit and I'll spray some in the palm of my hand and just lightly dust the brass. You don't want to soak it down just like that. And then you work the brass with your hand that has that uh, one shot and the imperial wax in it. And just work the brass. Lightly dust it again. Like I said you don't have to overdo it. Once more, I'll do it just a little bit, and that's it. And usually what I like to do is hit this up with an air hose at the very end. So the directions actually say you should let this sit for a little while and just, you know, if you're not using an air hose, I like to speed that up a little bit, hit it up with an air hose a little bit. And let's see here. I'm gonna put this in a regular tray here. So that is all lube now. So let's get this off to the side here. All right, so I went and reset my die. Um, once you get the die set, you can set it and forget it. And as long as you're comfortable with that particular headspace, 
if you're loading for numerous rifles with the same cartridge or same uh, caliber rifle, um, you might want to pick the, the lowest or smallest headspace and then stick with that as long as it's not too far off from the others, and it shouldn't be. But, um, but I went and reset this for you guys just so I could show you how I set this up from scratch, especially if you're new to the game. It looks like good old uh, Otter is jumping into the show here. Says, great idea. Thanks for sharing. Um, Jeff Calvert just jumped in. He's saying, hello, I found the link to your other channel. Thanks. And thank you for subscribing. Um, bold and curious, that press is the wrong color. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I wish it was blue. But it's red and it's Hornady. But, you know, I had nothing against Hornady. It's how I started out and... Really, I don't feel a need to change it, uh, but if I was to start over, I'd probably start with something blue like Dylan. <laughs> but anyway, um, so everyone's press is different. Everyone uses different dyes. So don't follow this to the T. You need to read those directions, not only for your press, but the directions that come for your dye. And at least for me, what I like to do, and you definitely, if you do leave the pin in here you better make sure you have it in station one here otherwise you will bend, bend the pin uh, but I'm gonna lock this down and this is the lock and load uh, AP press that uses these uh, I think they call these collars or inserts whatever um, but that allows you to quickly put in a die and take it back out while having to screw it in and screw it back out and you want to raise, pull down the handle, raise the ram until this shell or the die touches the shell plate. It stops right there. And I bring it back. And I'm going to leave this nut loose. And I'm not going to tighten that down until I get my acquired headspace. Now, like I was mentioning before, before you do anything, let's see here. You always want to check. The, your battery and your calipers and make sure it's fresh and I have this one piece of brass I know for a fact that this one piece of brass is exactly 1.750 inches long and I keep that brass on my bench and I'm going to zero out my calipers and I'm going to make sure that my calipers are reading true and that the battery is fresh and sure enough it is exactly that 1.750 right on the money so we are going to set that off to the side i'm going to put my bump gauge or headspace gauge in here and i know some of you guys probably use case gauges and if you guys have watched my reloading series before you know i don't use case gauges i like to personally and everyone's got a different opinion different method their madness and whatever you do it's what you do i'm not saying you're right or wrong this is just what i do um but I personally use bump gauges that you put on your calipers. I don't use case gauges. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. You reload for your rifle's chamber. You don't reload for a case gauge, especially if you're going for um, precision ammunition. And so we got the bump gauge in here. We got this zeroed out. And if you guys have been following this series, you know we bumped this back from fire form because every time I fire form this brass, the brass expands to 1.216 and we bumped this brass back to 1.213. You know, we're trying to ride that fine line of, you know, 2135 to 2125, somewhere around there. But if I could hit that 213 mark and you can never get it perfect, I don't care who, who you are, how awesome your equipment is, you'll never get it to exactly 213. It might be a little bit above, it might be a little bit below, but as long as you can get it within reason, that's the name of the game if you want consistent ammunition for consistent accuracy. And so just to prove to you why I don't use um, bump gauges and why I go off fire form brass, when you pull that trigger, and that sear releases on your trigger and that hammer goes home onto the firing pin and the fire pin hits the primer. The primer ignites and it ignites the powder or the propellant. And that brass, 
and that's why they use brass because it's malleable. It expands really easy and it seals off into the rifle's chamber. It literally will grow and seal off and custom size to that particular firearm's chamber and that's called fire forming. And just to show you how consistent this brass expands, like I said before, I've yet to measure this, but I bet it's to 1.216 because I've already reloaded this. It's on its uh, fourth fire now. And just to show you right there, 216. So let me grab another piece of brass here. Two one six. It's fire forming at two one six. Let me grab another piece. I'm just going to grab another miscellaneous piece here, and it is two one six. Am I proving my point to you guys? Why? In my opinion, you don't use a case gauge. This one's a little little under. 2155, but we might as well just say 216. Grab another piece. I don't know how many more times I need to do this to prove my point. 216. It fire forms to 216. And if you've watched this series, you'll know it was exactly that before. And we bumped that brass three thousandths of an inch about down to 213. And then when you fire it, it re-expands to 216. And then we resize it and it, we bump it back to 213. And at least for me, I'm not telling you what this is what you should do. I'm telling you what I do. For semi-automatics or an AR, I bump my brass from fire form roughly three thousandths of an inch or 0 0.003. If it's 216, we bump it. The fire forms at 216, we bump it to 1.213. Um... Or if it's, some, if it's a bolt action, you don't need to bump it that far. You need to bump it about three to four thousandths of an inch for a semi-automatic for function. Uh, but for a bolt action, you can get away with something more like one thousandths or two thousandths of an inch. So if, it, if fire formed at 216, we can bump it to 215, maybe 214. If it's hunting ammo, you might want better function. You might want to bump it back three thousandths of an inch, just like an AR, so you don't have any issues out in the woods. You don't want to have any issues while you're loading that fire that uh, ammunition out in the woods and you're going on your hunting trip. And hitting steel CA is just rolling in the house and he loves to say party when he rolls in, that's awesome. Um, so hopefully I've, I've got my point across to you guys and let's get this going. So now what we're doing with the full length resizing die is we're pushing the datum line and the datum line is the halfway distance. Let me grab the end of my calipers here. The distance from where the neck meets the shoulder and from the shoulder to the top of the body, that distance from here to here, the middle of that shoulder is called the datum line. And that's the datum line is from the middle of the shoulder to the base of the brass. And that's called your head space. And that's what you're pushing back. You're literally forcing the brass up into the die and the die is pushing that shoulder back. Three thousandths of an inch in this case in regards to a semi-automatic. And when that happens, at least a full length for sizing, it's, it squeezes the diameter of the body and the spec. It bumps that head space back, in this example, three thousandths of an inch, and also puts the neck that puts tension on the bullet. We wanna make sure we got good neck tension. It puts that neck back in the spec. And if you got a little bit of a ding in the case mouth opening, like in this example, it will get rid of that ding and it'll put that neck back in the spec. I don't know if you guys can make this out here. Um, but that's what we're doing here. Um, always, not following my own rules here. Make sure you got your safety glasses on when you're in the reloading room. Regardless of what you're doing, if you have any propellants or primers around, you should have safety glasses on. Um, so let's get this going. So what I like to do on my first initial piece is what's called uh, conditioning the brass, or the die, I should say, conditioning the die. And I'll get the smallest amount of imperial case wax in the tip of my finger, and I say the small, it is damn near minute. You can barely make it out. 
and we're just talking the small amount and you can you can oversize uh sorry you can over lube your brass and what will happen when you over lube your brass is you'll get hydraulic dimples on the side of the body or up on the neck uh, because you've used too much lube and you're getting air pockets inside that die and little bubbles will start to form because the air can't escape and it will literally dent the side of the case body if you start seeing little dents or the brass is getting crushed a little bit it's a good sign that you use too much lube so what i'll do is I get a little bit of this imperial case wax and i'll rub it in my fingers just like this and then i'll just work the outside of that piece of brass let's get a little bit more here so we're going to condition the die in this first piece of brass that we're going to size and sometimes i'll get this on both my fingers here and then we also want to make sure we do the inside of the inside of the neck so we want to make sure we lube that pin so we get consistent headspace bumps I usually do this on the first piece, and if I got a, a huge reloading session, session of roughly 100 plus pieces, um, about every 20th piece of brass, I'll recondition that die again. I'll lube up the piece of brass, but you gotta be careful you don't use too much, because if you're running your ram, and you're, you're like, man, I'm getting a really nice consistent headspace bump, and then I notice that that uh, headspace bump is not becoming consistent anymore, I might, recondition that die, but if you do do that, um, you might oversize. And at least for me, when it comes to the Hornady lock and load press, I like to slightly over cam my press a little bit. Uh, you either have the option of screwing the die down a little bit further than normal, and the press will over cam, and you'll know what I'm talking about if you're new to the game. You'll, you'll feel it in the resistance of the handle. It's almost like it stops, but it'll keep on going. And it, the pressure spikes at the very bottom of the press handle as you push it down and then it will stop. And the second it stops, I stop. I don't ram down on it, I don't push down on that handle. And let me get that in the picture here. I do not put pressure on the bottom stroke. The second it stops, I let off and then I bring it back up. And you don't wanna do your sizing really fast. You don't wanna do this really fast. You wanna, you know, about this speed right here, nice and consistent. If you do it really quick, your headspace bumps are gonna be all over the place. And you can either over cam your press or you can not screw the press down, uh, not screw the die down as much and actually put force at the bottom which i've tried it before and my headspace bumps aren't as consistent as if i was to over cam a little bit uh so jerry bear tactical is just rolling in saying hello todd sorry for the late party and good evening to everyone in the chat so thanks for joining us there jerry bear so so let's get this going now on the first piece of brass you're most likely if you're in this example with a hornady lock and load press i'm mean, just going to touch the shell plate I'm most likely not going to um, bump that brass. I'm, what's gonna happen if you don't bump the brass, the headspace typically will grow. And let me grab this piece of brass here to prove it, that point to you. If you do not bump the brass, the headspace will grow. And we have yet to resize this. And this piece of brass is at 2155. So it'll just pr pretty much say 216. So let me make sure you guys are in focus here. And I'm not gonna bump the brass. I, I've done this enough times, I know this is most likely not gonna get bumped. And you're gonna watch this headspace grow. So let's run this first piece of brass here. So you can see I'm coming down and it stops. I don't push down on it. And now what happened is it put the body in the spec, it put the neck in the spec, but most likely it didn't push that uh, datum line back. I didn't push the headspace back. I just know because I've, I've done this enough. And a lot of guys make the mistakes like, oh, just put it, put your die in your press and then wait until it touches the shell plate and give it a quarter turn. If you are doing that, you're doing it wrong. And I'm gonna show to you right now, 
right there, you can see the headspace actually grew because we actually did not bump that headspace. And the reason why is the die did not come in contact with the shoulder. It did not come in contact with the datum line. And all it did was it put the body of the brass in the spec and because of that, it pushes the brass up. And that's why the headspace actually grew. And I'm gonna give this a quarter turn right now. So quarter turn right there. And I bet we still will not bump that headspace just to prove a point. And right there, it's back to where I started, 215. And our goal is 213. So if you would have just gave it a quarter turn like that, you literally would have had a one thousandth of an inch bump on your headspace. And for an AR, that is not good. You really have should have a minimum of three thousandths of an inch. And the reason why I suggest doing a three thousandth to five thousandths of an inch bump from fire form for an AR is you want that brass bumped back enough to function, but you don't want it bumped back so far that it takes an, a, an insane amount of distance. Let's say like you bumped it 10 thousandths of an inch. It needs to, that brass, when that propellant ignites, that brass literally needs to expand 10 thousandths of an inch. And you're gonna lower the longevity of that brass. Gases are gonna escape because that brass isn't sealing off in the chamber as fast. And if you can get something for an AR like 3 thousandths of an inch, that brass will seal off damn near instantly because it really only has to expand 3 thousandths of an inch. And that's, if you're going for precision ammunition, that's really what it's all about. So let's, um, uh, I can't remember if I turned this or not. I don't think I did. Let me just run this quick because I've been blabbering too much. Um, make sure we're not oversizing this brass. So we're down to, uh, I just, I turned that just a little bit. So two, one, three, five. So before I'll, I'll, I continue, I'm actually gonna grab another piece here and I'm gonna back this up just a smidgen. And I'm gonna condition the outside of this piece and I'm just gonna run this just to make sure we don't overshoot our headspace. So we're at 214, so I can keep on screwing this down. So if once I get past this, I feel very comfortable that we're gonna reach our target headspace. Now you can see as I get down, I don't press down, I stop and So we're at 214, so I need to go a little bit further. It doesn't take much at this point. So 2135, and that's exactly what we bumped it to last time, 2135. So we got 2135 on this, and that is some serious 2135. I mean, we are talking right on the money. So let's grab one more piece and then we're going to lock this die down. So I just want to make sure we don't overshoot this a little bit. So I'm going nice and slow. It overcams right now, it stops, and I back it up. And let's check this out again. So, yep, so we're at 214. So I got to, like I said, I backed this up. I'm going to Screw this back down. I feel very confident that's where we need to be right there. So I usually do that with about three pieces. Once I know I can get past three pieces, um, two, one, three, five, right there, my friends. So I feel very confident that that is where it needs to be. So once your brass has been sized, I've said this before, I'll say it again, you want to baby your brass. You definitely don't want to make sure one of these pieces falls off your reloading bench. It's, the ground and puts a dent in your case mouth opening. A dent in your case mouth opening means when you seat that bullet, all you're gonna do is rip the, or either scratch or rip off the ja uh, copper jacket off your bullet. So I will physically take it out of the progressive press and manually put it in the tray here. So let's run one more piece here. If this runs out to 2135, I am going to lock this die down. And right there, two, one, three. And another trick is, is to make sure you spin your brass a little bit. You wanna spin, spin your brass 
a little bit and you can see that reading will hover up and down a little bit and that's usually due to imperfections maybe a little bit of a nick from the ejector mark and you want to spin that brass and your bump gauge but you can see it's right there at 2135 so last four pieces have been exactly the same and that's where if you got consistent headspace bumps it's going to expand three thousandths of an inch consistently across the board it's not going to leak any gases because it's not expanding something like ten thousandths of an inch it's only expanding three thousandths of an inch and when i say three thousandths of an inch we are talking hair thin and it's not much so let's try one more here and if this is good i'm going to lock this down So I'm spinning this and right there too, I'm going to spin this. You can see it's at 2135. That's perfect. So let's run one more piece and I am going to lock this down. So we're going to running your ram and your handle consistently equals consistent headspace bumps. I can't stress that enough. So you can see I'm going at the same speed. It's over camming, it's over camming and it stops. I don't press down on it. And this is where we're gonna lock this down. So once you have that confirmed, I'm gonna lock this die down. So make sure this is locked down. So now I can set it, forget it, and I never have to do that process again. And we are exactly 2135. Man, I hope I'm proving a point to you guys in regards to consistent reloading. And it really doesn't get any better than this. So, two, one, three, five, again. Am I proving a point to you guys of why I don't use a case gauge? I hope I am. Try another one. Two, one, three, five. I mean, we are consistently bumping this past a thousandth of an inch, and that is insane consistency. Uh, so, Jeff Calvert saying, if I try a three thousandths of a bump, should I try it in my rifle? And if it doesn't feed well, what? Well, would that indicate a problem? So this is the deal, and this is why you do a larger headspace bump on an AR rifle. Not only for function, but in regards to a bolt action rifle, what you can do is say like you want to do, you, you, you get that ejected piece of brass, you measure your bump gauges. For pure example, say it is exactly 1.216. And you don't put a primer in it, you don't put any powder in it, you don't put a bullet in it, you just get that piece of bump headspace. You resize it, you pull that piece of brass out and you clean it off with some brake cleaner so you don't get lube inside your chamber. And you take that piece of brass and it fire formed at 216 and you wanted to do a one thousandth of an inch bump. So you resize that brass to 1.215. That will give you a one thousandth of an inch bump for a bolt action, not an AR semi-automatic, a bolt action. And you put that into the rifle's chamber and you, you close at home. And most likely what you're, the luxury you get with a bolt action is you fill that resistance in the press handle. You can literally fill, as you run that bolt home and then you lock it down, you can literally fill that tight head space in the bolt handle. And that is mostly indicating if it doesn't close at all, you have zero head space or you have too much head space. If when you close the handle on your bolt action rifle, you can feel that resistance in the handle, that might mean that you have zero head space or maybe only one thousandth of an inch of a head space. And some guys like it tight like that. So you take that piece of brass out of your bolt action and you, you make sure you lube it up. You don't lube it up again with some imperial case wax. It's going to get stuck in your die and you're going to use a bullet puller. And you're going to learn how to use that quick. So make sure you lube it back up. You, you uh, turn your die down a little bit. And you bump it another thousandth of an inch. So you got two thousandths of an inch bump and you, you pull that piece of brass out, you clean it with brake cleaner and you put it in your bump gauge and it's exactly two thousandths of an inch from fire form. You put that into your bolt action, you cleaned it with brake cleaner so you don't get lube inside your chamber. 
And then you run that bolt again, and then you notice with a thousandth of an inch, and you will notice this, notice this with a bolt action, that, that when you lock that bolt down, it's a lot easier. You know, there might be a little bit of tension in comparison to no tension, but it's a lot easier to close compared to the thousandths of an inch bump. And some guys will probably stop right there, but if you're shooting competition or you're hunting, you might want more of a three thousandths of an inch because you don't want to sit there and fight your bolt. So you pull that out, you clean it off a brake cleaner. Uh, I'm sorry, you pull that piece out, you make sure you lube it and you, you screw your die down a little bit and resize it, pull it out, pull, clean it with brake cleaner so you don't get lube inside your rifle's chamber. And you double check it with your calipers and now you're at a three thousandths of an inch bump from fire form. And you put that piece of brass in the rifle's chamber and you run that bolt home and you lock it down and you feel no resistance now. And that means you, you have an adequate amount of uh, headspace bump from fire form. And a lot of guys will do that. And so, I know some guys that won't even use bump gauges. When it comes to a bolt action, they'll, they'll go strictly off how that bolt feels in regards to how they close that bolt home. Now, with that said, in regards to a bolt action, you don't get that luxury with a semi-automatic or an AR. You don't have the luxury of even touching that bolt. That, especially in an AR, that bolt is rammed home by force with a spring and a buffer behind it, and it does it for you. And that's why you need to have at least a minimum three thousandths of an inch, or I would say roughly, if you're going for precision ammunition, three thousandths to five thousandths of an inch bump from fire form. And, and that's why. So I hope that explains it to you there, Jeff. Uh, good old Sean's rolling in the house, the big thumbs up. So uh, I don't know if I size this, but I can tell. I have bump gauges, I can tell. And I can tell I didn't resize this because I've been blabbering too, too much. So we are gonna insert this. And right there, two, one, three, five. I, you know, it really doesn't get any more consistent than that. And that's where everything comes together in regards to annealing your brass. The annealing helps with consistent headspace bumps. Running your press handle consistently, you know, not really fast. And in this case, and every press is different, you just need to learn how your, your press works and how you need to run that press. In this case, this likes to be overcammed a little bit. And like I said, you can feel this overcamming, 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 stop. I don't push down on it. And you need to run that handle the exact same way every single time if you want consistent headspace bumps like this. And Thor's ax is just rolling into the house saying, hey, Todd. So you can see I'm overcamming, overcamming, and I stop. I don't put any pressure on it. And once again, you know, and once in a while you'll get a piece that isn't perfect. And like I said, this one is 214. So that would probably be acceptable. Uh, I'll try and run this again. I'll bet it'll be 2135. And once in a while you get that stubborn bass. And that's where case hardening comes into place. Uh, 2135 again. And if you get, if you don't anneal your brass and you get case hardening, you'll see that your headspace bumps will be all over the place. Now, what are we up to? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this might be a good time to recondition that die. I can notice that my headspace is veering off a little bit. It's kind of, it's kind of going back up. So don't use a lot. It just takes a little bit. You don't want to overdo this. And if you're going for precision ammunition, I'll, I would literally measure the headspace in every single one of these. And stop. And if you overdo the uh, lube, it will overshoot your headspace. So 2135. And you can see when I pick this up, I kind of quickly run over the outside of the case body with my Fingers covered in peril wax. And every once in a while I'll double check, make sure my die is nice and tight. 
2135. Am I proving a point to you guys? I hope I am in regards to why I don't use case gauges. And a lot of guys think they need a single stage press to create precision ammunition. And there is a lot of truth to that. A single stage press will create better, more consistent um, ammunition, 2135. Uh, but I, I think you can definitely produce consistent precision ammunition on a progressive press, just like this Hornady lock and load. And there's no reason why you can't. And that's why I never felt the need to upgrade. And it, it serves its purpose. And for me, you know, it definitely produces accurate ammunition. So... So Thor is actually saying, Todd, what works for you? Works for you, buddy. However, I do, don't do like to do that over camming thing. It stresses a press linkage, especially if you have a low cost press like a Lee Challenger. And that's a good point. Um, you know, and like I said, everyone's got uh, different opinions to what they do. I've literally been over camming this press um, for the last four plus years and I, I'm not, it's not, it's not a, a big overcam. I'm like, literally you can see this coming down and it stops there. You can see it comes down, stops right there. And then here's the overcam. It's not much. If, if you're doing a serious overcam, yes, I would not do that. You know, I think a little bit of overcamming in my, in my opinion, doesn't hurt. Um, and it really does depend on the press. Um, so just to show you once again, this piece is fire formed at 216. Sometimes you can stop at the bottom too, if you, if you do over cam. And so this is 214, so it's not exactly perfect. I'll actually run this again. I bet I'll be right at 2135, actually be 214 would be suitable. You probably wouldn't even tell the difference. Um, but yeah, 2135 right there. So 2135. And uh, Thor's X says, I believe you have demonstrated that you have a great feel for it. And that's really what it's all about. It's, it's all about understanding and learning your equipment, especially when it comes to running your press handle. You gotta learn how every press is different. And then when I pull this piece of brass out, I will check the case, outside the case body to make sure there's no um, hydraulic dimples, you know, making sure I'm not over lubing my brass. You know, and this one's about 213 to 2135. So yeah, I'm not gonna bore you with all these pieces. I think I'll probably do one more here just to prove a point to you guys. I'll probably do the rest of this off camera. So if you've got any questions, uh, let those questions. So this one is 214. I'm actually gonna size this a little bit more. You know, I probably could screw down this die just a little bit more, but it's, like I said, I mean, I spin that brass in the 2135. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this. And it really is all about consistency. And I've said, said it before, regardless if it's annealing, consistent annealing, consistent trimming, um, consistently running your press hand uh, handle and the ram consistently, um, it all comes down to that word consistency. And let me get this camera pointing up so you can actually see my beautiful face. <laughs> so, and it just doesn't stop there. Once you get the reloads done, it's all about consistency at the rifle range, you know, in regards to consistent cheek weld, making sure you have a d decent cheek weld so it gets your eye box lined up perfectly with your eye. And every time you bring your head down on that butt stock, that, that cheek weld hits right on underneath your cheekbone. So right 
above your jaw and underneath your cheekbone, you're getting a, a consistent cheek weld, consistent eye box. You're double checking your parallax in regards to doing a head bob, you know, making sure that your crosshairs aren't all over the place in regards to your bullseye. Playing with that parallax until that the crosshair stop moving off of your target. Consistent breathing and a consistent trigger pull. And I promise you guys, you'll be subbing away. Um, so Mr. Parts for Sale says, yo gun nuts. <laughs> Otter saying, thanks for sharing. Doug B is just rolling in the house saying, evening. If you guys are just joining us right now, once this live event's done, this will upload as a permanent video and you can go back and watch this from scratch. And this is part four, resizing for the 6.5 Grendel. And if you missed the other three parts, part one, part two, part three, you can go back and watch those too. And if you can, if you guys enjoy my content, you enjoy this video series, you feel like you're learning something, do me a favor, if you could jump over to Elster's Minute Americans and subscribe, and that's exactly what this B-side channel to Elster's, Elster's Rifles Reloading, Elster's Minute Americans is gonna be exactly this all the time. So you guys can learn even more. It's gonna be nothing but live streams, podcasts. I'm gonna have very knowledgeable guests on there so we can chat, talk, and learn together as a community. Because when we learn as a community, we protect our rights and we pass that knowledge on to the next generation. And that is truly the only way we are gonna do this. You, your vote can only go so far. And if you don't pass this knowledge on to the next generation, that vote will die. I hope you guys learned something. And if you did, continue to scratch my back and I'll continue to scratch your back with this video content. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Hit that notification bell and I'll see you friends in the next video.